guys, welcome back to the Desert Wine Guy. Today, I have a Zinfandel to review. Now, to be honest with you guys, as always, I do not normally like Zinfandels, okay? To me, they're always very jammy, very black fruit forward, and they just really put me off, okay? They always come across very sweet. Now, since since there's really very little sugar in a normal wine, okay, we're not talking a Moscato, there's very little sugar in a wine. And a lot of times a wine will come, come forward as sweet when in reality it's not sweet. But you know what? If I taste a wine and it tastes sweet, I'm not going to dig into why it's tasting sweet. And if it's sweet or if it's like something else, I taste sweetness, okay? And I know that's what you guys taste as well in a wine sometimes, okay? So that's the word I'm going to use. Now, wine comes in at 14.8% alcohol. Uh, and I paid $39 and change for it. So let's just call it 40 bucks, okay? Um, so like I said, normally I don't do Zinfandel. And that's why you won't see Zinfandels on my uh, desertwineguy.blogspot.com. And you won't see Zinfandels normally on my YouTube channel. Um, the guy that owns the local wine shop near me suggested this, and I told him my feelings on Zinfandel, and he said, oh, no, no, you got to try this one. So, here we are, I've tried it, and here's my thoughts on it. Okay, is the, the wine is very bold, okay, remember it's a Zin, okay, the wine is very black, fruit forward, very bold, and it immediately takes control of the palate with that black fruit, okay. Um, there is a big component of a black cherry intermixed with blueberry here. And is it fruit forward? It's fruit forward. Is it jammy? It's got a little bit of jamminess to it too, okay? But to me, to me that fruit forwardness and jamminess just sits right on that edge, okay? To where I would like bomb the wine or where I would say, okay, I am understanding this wine. So I'm gonna go with the I'm understanding the wine, okay? Um, it's just on that edge, like I said, and I am understanding the wine. Um, black cherry, uh, blueberry, um, let's try it again and we'll see. There was a black pepper here. And that really pulls that wine up, pulls it away from teetering over the edge and the black cherries and I'm, I'm sorry the black pepper is really nice um, the wine has some crumbly tannins to it which are really instrumental also in guiding this wine um, they come across on the palate really really nice um, as far as the 14.8 percent alcohol goes there should be no worries there as I'm not even tasting the alcohol on this wine the wine is very well balanced especially when it comes to the alcohol portion of it, the alcohol tasting portion of it. Um, this wine, the grapes come from Napa, and because the, the Frank family owns, I believe it's 135 acres of uh, Napa Valley vineyards, and it comes from different various vineyards in the Napa Valley that they own, so it's a state grown, the grapes are a state grown state wine. There is a there is a Rutherford dust type note to the wine as well, and to me that is one of the greatest things on a cab, and obviously one of the greatest things on a Zen because I just think it's amazing. Okay, you give me that Rutherford dust, and while there may be an argument as to whether it exists or doesn't exist, to me it does exist, and that just really sets a wine off. It's really hard to hurt a wine once it presents that dust, okay? Mm. So I'm looking at my notes here as I'm currently writing the blog review of this. I already mentioned the blueberry, but there is a blackberry too that comes out here. And all the fruit that's on this wine is just vibrant. It's fresh. It's it's jumping out of the glass and onto the palate. It's like an in-your-face uh, fruit. Bizarre. Um, is anything overdone in the wine? 
nothing's overdone in the one. It's, like I said earlier, it's very well balanced. For 40 bucks, uh, I would have to say this is a steal. Now, again, remembering that I am not a Zinfandel person, okay? So if you're watching this video and you're not a Zinfandel person, I do think you need to give this wine a try. I do think you will enjoy it. It's not a typical Zin. Uh, and for, like I said, for 40 bucks, uh, yeah, it, it's, 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 a good, it's a great deal. Now, as far as the cellar over here goes, it has to hit, a wine has to hit 94 points before it makes that cellar. Does the wine hit 94 points? The wine hits 94 points. What, so, would I personally put a bottle of this in my cellar? I would have to say absolutely I would. And I recommend you do it as well. Um, now, there's been a couple of people reviewing this wine with me. And they've... I've tasted blueberry, okay? They're, ta they're tasting blackberry, okay? So, you know, I, I guess wine's open to interpretation. We all know that. But they've tasted blackberry. So, having said all that, I recommend you go out, if you can find the wine, and buy the wine. And uh, I think it's a really good wine. And I think even those who do not like Zinfandel will like this wine. So, I hope that helps you guys, and while the, uh, while the, 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 the palate presentation of this wine may seem limited, seem limited, I promise you it's not. It, it really just takes control of that palate, and the wine just directs where your palate's going. You don't have a choice. You don't have an opportunity to say, nah, nah I'm going to go over here, and nah, I'm not really going to taste that too much, but you know what? The wine just throws it all at you and says, no, you're going to do what I say. So that's it, guys. I hope you enjoyed the review. Uh, if you did, please like the, like the video and subscribe to the channel. And please, guys, let everybody know about the channel. It would really mean a lot to me. And uh, that's about it. So until next time, thanks for checking out the Desert Wine Guy, and I'll speak to you guys later.